Well, hello one and all. What I have come on to kind of do today, I hope you all are having a great evening. I have decided, since I've been starting this Guitar Academy and everything like this, I wanted to give a six weeks every Friday at 7, live here on Facebook, on my Facebook page, but it's public for anybody that wants to watch. I'm going to be doing guitar lessons, focusing on what a lot of people have asked me to do, is it's right on time, right there with the clock. I'm going to be doing fingerstyle lessons for six weeks free. Basically, this is what my live setup looks like when I teach someone online and they want to come and learn uh, what something like that looks like. So this is exactly what it would look like if you take lessons from me if you're in person or if you're actually like want to come online and do a lesson with me. This is what that kind of stuff looks like. So I got a lot of questions and comments about what people wanted to kind of learn. I wanted to come on and kind of help some people that are interested in doing some guitar. And fingerstyle was something that kept coming up, kept getting asked. And so I'm going to be doing six weeks of fingerstyles and every week we're going to be progressing up in the uh, caliber or the basically a skill level of fingerstyle. So, but even if you're someone that has already been playing a while, this is some stuff that even you can learn. These are techniques that even I do, um, even I guess 14 years or so um, into it on the set. How long have I been playing, JP? JP's over on my right off screen. He's playing some Pokemon right now. It's getting up there. 14. I was almost 14 when I started. So almost 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 24, 25, 26, 27. Yeah, so I'm going on 14 years in September. So there you go, going on 14 years in September. For those of you, yeah, so I've been playing guitar for 14 years. That's my major, that's my degree. I majored in guitar and worship. Um, in college and so uh, it's really fun. Uh, finger style is a great thing to do and before I get started I've actually got some free stuff you can actually download right now. So I just came out before we get started with my very first uh, guitar book, How to Play Guitar and it kind of focuses more on finger style but not just finger style. It, it covers all the concepts and you can actually get this for free. You can hit the link, click the link in the comments below this video, and you can download it, an ebook copy for free. Um, I'm not doing that forever, but while I'm doing these six weeks, um, I've actually kind of got that going on right now, that special deal. So you need to take advantage of that. And once you kind of learn some stuff, go on and download that uh, free ebook copy. Uh, it's really cool. I'm really excited. It's like almost, I think it's like 49 lessons in it. So, and you have to forgive the geese that are talking. I am on a farm, so anyone who does lessons with me typically hears farm animals talking around. So, diving into when I got asked the question, let's start with some basics today and then get into some exercises that will help you even if you've been playing for 14 years like me, or maybe longer. I don't know. So, okay, finger style, obviously you're going to throw the pick away. And uh, it's really fun, it's really rewarding. Um, when you can kind of begin to kind of, when you kind of get through some of the basics, you know, we'll be covering like... Uh, Fingerstyle's just a really pretty thing. There it is. Play the harmonics. Uh, Fingerstyle is really fun. Uh, I think it's one of the more challenging styles of guitar. It gets even... Uh, more fun when you start to kind of add um, some melody into it. That gets really fun when you for when you're kind of just picking the arpeggios and then you kind of get into the melodies. And so today what we're going to kind of cover is a if if you're a first time finger stylist we're going to cover what uh, in Portuguese we call it a marcha I learned to play in Brazil with the Brazilian so this rhythm is called the marcha which in English we just translate as the march but in, in in America it's really referred to more as like the boom chuck strumming 
is typically what you call it here. And uh, it's extremely common to uh, find it in a lot of folk style music. If you do songs like I'll Fly Away and other stuff like that. Extremely common. You've probably heard it a million times once you know what it is, once you hear it. So we're going to kind of be learning that rhythm and you can use it for so much stuff it's so helpful when you start adding the bass walks and everything like that in there we're going to learn it in the key of a um, a lot of people play in the key of g um, that's not where i started uh, in brazil we really focus on the key of a and i actually like it better starting in the key of a than the key of g so we're going to start in the key of a so you're going to have to learn to play an a chord maybe you don't know um, <clears throat> maybe you don't know what an a chord is if you don't know what an A chord is, you can also download that in my book and it'll give you a chord chart where you can see it. But let me walk you through what an A chord is really quick. So you're gonna place your, let's kind of get into the fingering system for finger style. So if we're dealing with chords and we're dealing with our left hand, um, you've got your fingers going on here. Your first finger, I should probably show it like this. First finger, the camera's backwards for me. Second finger, your middle finger. Third finger is your ring and fourth is your pinky. So when we're dealing with that, we refer to our fingers one, two, three, and four. So when we line them up right here and we kind of look at basically where we're gonna place these, each of these, when you get in these boxes, each gonna be called a fret on the guitar. And if you already know this, just sit tight real quick and hang on. Um, and what we're going to do is on the second fret, so we're going to the second fret right here, and we're going to place our third finger on the second string from the bottom. So on the second string, we're going to place our second finger on the third string from the bottom, second fret, and we're going to place our first finger on the first um, on the second fret on the fourth string and we're going to strum as you can see in my hand right here we're only going to strum the five strings uh, five strings down we're staying off that top six string over here we're trying not to hit that as best you can with the A chord now then we kind of have our A chord set up here so you can see it. Some people, if they struggle to kind of put that, kind of if their hands are too big to place right there, a lot of times you'll just take your first finger and they'll just lay it down on those three strings, um, which can be a little harder or easier depending on who you are. So just find what's comfortable for you and uh, go with it. And like I said, if you download my ebook, you can see a chord chart uh, with everything looking um, nice and pristine uh, right there so and so we're gonna have that A chord and then we're gonna grab um, the D chord which is awesome right here the D chord if you're not familiar with quite what that is we're gonna look at this a little bit you're gonna take your first finger on the second fret place it on the third string then you're going to take your second finger, which would be your middle finger, and you're going to place it on the second fret on the first string, one at the very bottom, the high E string. Then we're going to take and put your third finger on the second string on the third fret. Right there. And we're only going to hit the four strings down. I'm not going to hit anything else, just the four strings. And so, there we go, get my mic up a little bit. And so that's the D chord. Then we're going to find our way going to, we're going to find ourselves at the E chord. So what that looks like right here, let me get a little closer on the camera, is you're going to take your first finger on the first fret on the third string 
so just right there. Then we're going to take our third finger. Yeah, we could, why not make it an E7? We're going to take our second finger and place it on the second fret. Second fret on the fifth string. So it looks like that. So first finger on the first fret of the third string, the G. Second finger on the second fret, the fifth string. And you will strum all the strings. Every single one. So you don't have to worry about trying to miss something while you're, while you're playing it. So we've got our A chord. Got our D chord. And we got our E7 chord. And again, if you download the digital ebook in the comments below, if you click the link, you can see chord charts and everything set up all nice and neat um, as we keep going. So, all right, once you have these chords, the rhythm we're going to kind of look at here, when, when dealing with finger style with our right hand, so we've kind of gone over, we've gone over the left hand, what we talk about. Talk about your first finger, second finger, third finger, and your fourth finger being your pinky, going your way in to out. With our right hand, we're gonna be, um, I play right-handed, I'm left-handed, but I play right-handed. If you're left-handed, you'll be doing this backwards, but um, most people aren't left-handed. If, you, if you're out there, I feel you, I'm sorry. We're left, left hands in a right-handed world. What you're gonna do is, on finger start with our right hand, we refer to them as, your thumb is P, your index is I, your middle is M, and why don't you throw me the way? I'll, um, and then we refer to your um, the ring finger as the um, as A. And you technically do have a name for your pinky, um, but typically it's not just standard where you use your pinky and finger style. Typically, you're just going to take care of these three, and that's all we're going to do today. So we're not going to worry about the pinky. Um, it kind of does come up later, but just set standard is those three and your thumb. So we're going to do with this P, I, M, A. So it's basically one, two, three, four, P, I, M, A. And your index and middle are easy because it's I and M, index, middle, and then the A is what kind of throws you off um, just the way it is, rooted in Italian, all that kind of stuff. Polo Gar and Chicanor Medley, Analum. So, now that we're doing the finger style, you're going to hit with this with this boom chuck rhythm. You're going to hit the root note of the chord you're playing every time you switch. So your thumb's going to be moving around. So you got to pay attention. This this exercise will teach you accuracy, and it will help you to really uh, be able to move around and be very precise while you're finger picking, um, because finger style is just extreme precision. Um, that's why I typically, if I'm doing a first time finger stylist. Um, we'll do this rhythm because the accuracy is so important. Um, even though it might be a little harder up front, it pays in the long run to have the accuracy um, if you're a finger stylist with your strings, hitting specific strings at the same time. So let's start with the A chord. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with our thumb on the fifth string because the A chord is the root note. We're going to hit the root note on the fifth string. It's like the second lowest string. And we're going to strike down on all the strings except the, this, the top one. We're trying to stay off that. So you strike with your thumb on the fifth string and strum down. And you can take this as slow, as fast as you need to. Um, accuracy is so important. Don't get too fast. Um, I did that. I played too fast for myself. And then 10 years into it, I had to find myself backtracking um, and go back to the basics because I had skipped some steps. So don't be like me. Get 10 years and then have to go back and fix that kind of stuff. If you can play super fast, great. But if your top speed is literally just that's okay. Start there. Make it clean and accurate. That's what we're really going for. So when you're playing this boom chuck, 
with finger style, and you're doing that, uh, when you, we're gonna jump to the D chord, and when you get to the D chord, you're gonna be hitting the fourth string, because the D string is four strings down. If you have my ebook on your screen, or next to you, whatever it is, wherever you have it, you can see all the chord charts and stuff. Um, so right there, and just strike that down. And the E chord, the E7, is going to be the top string with our thumb and then hitting all the strings down. <clears throat> so to recap a little bit, the A chord is the fifth string, then strum them all down. The D chord is the fourth string, and then we strum it down. And then the E7 is the top string and strum down. So when you put that all together, it'll sound something like this. We'll do four chords of each one. Back to the A. right there. So let's try that again. Let's do four chords. Let's do four passes of each chord. Uh, four rhythms of this of this march rhythm of the boom chuck. So, ready? One, and two, and three, and four, and... chord go to the E7 remember to hit that top string remember to be paying attention with your thumb where you're going where the root of the chord is and then end on A all right I thought you guys could take that a little bit faster so let's do this one more time let's go a little bit more up the speed just a little bit I think you can do it. I think you guys are doing such a great job right now so here we go and up the speed one and two and three and four and going back to the A chord and then going to the E7 And on the A. Fantastic. And so then when you practice and you kind of get up to speed, the speed you're trying to aim to have for a very precise rhythm is going to be something like this if you're playing I'll Fly Away, a lot of those classic hymns or the tunes you're going to be playing. The boom check rhythm is going to do something like this. So let me get my chord out of the way. a little bit faster um, if you if you need something uh, if you're kind of having trouble making the chord transitions quickly um, typically that's the most common problem I have is people once they start to get stuff in their hands they, they can get the rhythm down then get once they get it placed they're going very quickly but they can't get the chord to move over very fast and transition that's completely normal um, there's a couple of things you can do to kind of help with that um, what I like to do is when I take something like the, the A chord, and you can just be literally, um, take your A chord, and you can be pressing it up and down. And this is just gonna give you some, it's basically like a chord push up, is what it is. And it's gonna try to help your hands develop a little bit more and get a little more active um, in doing something like this. And you can change the chord go to the D, start doing some of those push-ups with that chord. Uh, it seems really redundant, but even if you're actually an experienced player and you're having some new chords, this, this works. I still use something like this. 
um, E7, and go up and down. And it just kind of, it's kind of trying to trick your brain a little bit. There's another technique you can do that tricks it even better, um, which is actually probably among my most favorite. And when you take the A chord, for example, when we play an A chord, just a straight up A chord, nothing fancy. You can take it and let's say when we place our fingers, you might place them differently. I might place my first finger on, then my second, and then my third finger. Well, then when I play it again, what I might do is place my second finger, my third finger, and my first finger. I'm constantly changing the order of the way I place my fingers. And then I might play my third finger, my first finger, and my second finger. Then I might play my second finger, my first finger, and my third finger. And then I just keep rearranging the order of my fingers. And what this does is it will actually trick your brain to play the chord and learn it faster because you're changing the movement of your hands and the progression of your fingers and your, your brain kind of, your hand freaks out and goes, I don't know how to play that. And what you're trying to do with your hands in this exercise is your brain, you're tricking your brain saying, no, you, you can play it. And no matter how much we change the order, it's totally cool, it's okay. And you're basically just calming your brain down and tricking it to let your hands play the chord. Um, and I find once people do this, um, it comes a whole lot easier to them. So that's a great little exercise you can do. Um, you could take the D chord, the same thing. I might do my first finger, second finger, third finger. And I might do my second finger, third finger, first finger. And then I might do my third finger, first finger, second finger. And then third, second one, I might do two, one, three. But I'm constantly just changing the order and trying to tell my brain, hey, calm down, you can play this. It's not, it's all right, it's not that hard. And so if you do that, and you can go to the E7 chord and do the same thing. Uh, two, one, one, two. Quick little run out of options because we're only putting two fingers on the fretboard. But, but you get my idea. You're trying to trick your brain. Great little technique. Um, if you're having trouble with chords, those are a couple of exercises you can do. Um, even if you're an experienced player and you do, you're doing some more, you know, some more jazzy chords or something, that's a, a great way to just trick your brain. It really works. <laughs> I thought it was something kind of crazy. It's so simple. And I tried it myself and lo and behold, it was actually working and I was proven wrong. So learning from some individuals. And so, okay, once you have that down, um, that's the speed you're going to want to do. Um, maybe you're someone who's already a little further along in finger style. Uh, maybe you're watching and you're already overwhelmed by watching that. And that's totally, completely normal. It's okay. It, practice makes perfect. Um, just, just keep it up. Take it slow. Look at that ebook. Uh, download it in the comments below and kind of go through some of the exercises we have. Uh, this is among, I think this is like the first song we actually learn is the Boomchuck in my guitar book and the March Rhythm and learn some of that. Um, and then, but maybe this is a little easy for you. And so let's take it up a little notch if that's a little easy. Um, what you can do to spice it up is when you play your thumb instead of strumming, which is great when you get to a chorus or something, but maybe you want to... Uh, maybe you're in a verse and you need a little more subtlety, the dynamics need to be lower. Well, what you'll take with your fingers, if I can get close to my iPad right here, you'll take your, each of your fingers, the I, your index, middle, and your ring finger, I, M, and A. You'll take them and assign them each to the one of the strings in the bottom. Your index will be, your I is going to be on the third string on the G string, your, by the way, your middle finger, your M, I have to, sometimes I'm bilingual, I have to translate everything in my head, I know it in Portuguese first, goes on the B string, and then your ring finger, your A, is going to go on the high E string, and so each one, and they're just going to stay there, they're not going to move, they're each going to pluck one of those strings. So, what we're going to do there 
is um, once we do that, we're going to take it. So when you play your thumb, and play that. And instead of strumming down, you're going to pluck it on the down, that down stroke. So you do thumb, strike, thumb, strike, thumb, strike, thumb, strike. Uh, JP, could you get me my tuner in my case? I don't have it on me and it's starting to be a little unbearable. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I know watching they can hear it. I didn't tune my guitar before I started. It probably sounded horrible before. Um, and so what we're going to do is you're going to play that strike with your thumb and then your three fingers. Pluck them on those strings. Go back to your thumb. Pluck them on those three strings. Thumb. Pluck on those three strings. And then when we go to the D chord, you have to pay attention because you gotta do your thumb where the root changes, fourth string. Pluck those three strings. Only your thumb is gonna be moving around. Back to the A chord on the fifth string, the root. The same three strings are the same, plucked. And then go into the E7, the top one gets plucked, but those same three strings. So once you do that, we're going to kind of, uh, yeah, let's kind of try to get this through. So let's do like three, let's do four times on each one. Thank you so much, JP. And as I tune, what we're about to do is we're going to uh, play four passes of each chord and kind of get that to go along here as I get this out. This is probably going to sound so much better for y'all. Much better. Thank you, John. Alrighty. So let's make four passes of each chord. One, two, three, four. Go to the D chord. Two, three, four. Go to the A chord again. Three, four. Go to the E7. Hit that top string. Make sure your thumb's moving around. Three, four. And end on the A chord. All right. I think I did that pretty good. We're going to up it up the speed just a little bit. One, and two, and three, and four, and. D. In that fourth string. Back to the A. Go to E7, and bringing it home to the A. Fantastic. All right, good pass. Uh, if that's not a little overwhelming for you, I mean, crank up the speed, but remember, make it, keep it clean. That's the objective, is to be clean and accurate. If your accuracy is great, the speed's going to come, but uh, if you're uh, players don't lack accuracy nowadays. Uh, they lack, that, excuse me, they don't lack speed playing nowadays. There's so many videos you can watch to get really quick speed, but they sound which is really choppy and twingy players. So accuracy um, puts you in a whole different caliber. So if you can play a little faster, it's something you're trying to up up to. One and two and three and four and. into that. Um, if it's something you want to kind of up it up a little bit more and maybe that's a little easy for you, then you can do the alternate boom chuck technique playing the bass walk. While doing that. while you're playing. So you're doing, you're playing the bass part, and that's the great thing about finger styles. When you're playing finger styles, as you work up the levels, you're not just playing guitar, you're playing the guitar, you're playing the bass, you can play percussion, 
and you're also playing the the lead, the melody. So you're actually doing four things as you work up on the tier and the guitar, which is really cool. Um, it makes it makes the guitar just really fun and unique in itself. And so when we're doing that and we're alternating, you'll play the root note on the A chord, the fifth string. You'll strike the strings, and then you'll come down to the fourth string. And then strike those three again. So only your thumb's moving around. So it's like fifth string, strike, fourth string, strike. Now when we make our way over to the D chord, that's where it gets a little interesting. You strike the fourth string, you pluck all the same three strings. Well, you run out of room when you go down. So we're gonna have to go up to the fifth string. So we run out of room. So it's the four to the fifth string. Going back to that A chord, the fifth string, same three. Pluck the fourth, strike the others. And when we go to the E7, we strike the top string play those strings and go down to the fifth string and then strike the others and end on the A. So when we put it together it sounds like this. One and two and three and four and And on that A. So it sounds something like that. A little faster. I think you got it in you. Come on, let's give it a shot. Here we go. One and two and three and four and. Nice. And so then when you work it up and you start to build that speed, what you're aiming for is something of this kind of speed nature. put it all together and pick it up so you're playing the bass part which is really fun and so and then you can whoa so I hit my microphone off my belt okay I think that's better Fantastic. Okay. So, you know, I'm getting a lot of crackling. I don't know why. Might have just broken my lapel. I have to get through the crackling. Okay. That's a little bit better. Now, so when we get through that, uh, that's where it gets really fun. And when you, when you up the tier, you can start to add the bass walks when you kind of, we're not going to get into that today, but when you up the bass walks and stuff and you get into those. Uh, <laughs> You get the idea. The possibilities are just absolutely uh, limitless uh, with what you can do and what you want to do, and it's just absolutely really, really fun. So, an exercise I want to give you guys to really help you develop some hand strength is uh, part of what I do when I when I teach in my academy. Or if you want to learn kind of more stuff like this, and you get more in depth and learn kind of where you're at specifically. Um, when I do like a 30-day finger style challenge, how to be a finger stylist in 30 days, 
And one of the exercises I give them is something that even I use to keep my hand in shape. It's basically the concept of learning to master the guitar with just playing 10 minutes a day, um, which I thought was a bunch of just hogwash because I, that was like my degree. You had to be playing, you know, four or six hours a day um, to learn an instrument and master it, and uh, which I'm not even close to mastering it, but um, got way too much to learn. Uh, but what you do with that is learn to do it instead of playing for four or six hours, you learn to play in just 10 minutes a day because everybody has 10 minutes a day. Um, statistically, Americans, if you get off your phone, you get five hours back a day on average if everybody's on their phone. So if you want five hours of your day back, hey, America, just put the cell phone down. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this and uh, a little exercise that I just absolutely love and still use. Um, it's, it's a hammer on and pull off technique. So you're going to strike, let's stop, start on the top string, the first fret up here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna strike it with nothing on, hammer on, and we're gonna pull off, hammer on, pull off, hammer on, and pull off. We're gonna do that four times, so it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, working your way down so each finger is going to be assigned um, to a specific fret first finger on the first fret second finger on the second fret third finger on the third fret and fourth finger your pinky on the fourth fret and you're just going to work your way down the strings and so when you play it's like strike hammer on pull off hammer on pull off and when you put your finger down the second time you're going to pull the string when that hammer on comes down. You're going to pull it, get a little more volume. Pull. Pull. Open. And then you're going to play that open A string. We're going to be going down. Hammer on. strings you're gonna to have to play that string open when I'm doing that last finger uh, sorry I gotta put that next string open just to get a little more volume and a little more juice The good news is you do not have to go back down. <laughs> um, you can feel those, uh, that, that gives you an insane workout in your hands. Now, that's not the speed you, you start at. That's, it's gonna be like the low speed if we say level one or however fast you can do it, start on that speed. Make it crisp, make it clean and clear. Now when you up it up and as you get more into the exercise, idea of working up that speed. You do that for any amount of time, man, it's already burning. Your hand's going to quickly, quickly start to cramp up and burn a little bit, and that's just going to make 
your hand loosen up. It's going to feel great. Don't do that more if you're first starting out with that. Don't do that for more than a minute. Um, I was an idiot and I was like, ah, this is easy. I'll do it for 10 minutes and my, my hand was like cramping up the next day. So uh, just kind of one minute do that drill and trust me after a minute you're not going to want to do any more. So uh, fantastic. So uh, that's a little exercise you can do. Um, I hope you've kind of enjoyed some of these exercises and the finger styles. And again, if you got any questions, uh, put it in the comments below and uh, I'll be answering those. I didn't mention that early on, but if you've got questions about something or a technique, or maybe you've got a finger style that uh, you actually kind of want to, uh, want to know a little bit. Uh, maybe you've got a technique, uh, you know, there's, there's so much stuff out there, you know, comment below, tell me what you want to hear, what question you have anything like that. Um, I love to answer anything I can. So don't forget to download my, my ebook. It's free for the time being. You can get that below in the comments below. Just click on the link and it'll take you there and you can download a, uh, you can download that absolutely for free. And um, then I don't think I'm trying to forget if I have anything else. Uh, practice those drills. And like I said, I'll be doing this for six weeks, uh, doing finger styles every Friday at 7. And so come on out and as we go through the weeks and keep upping the tier and learn something basic and then it progresses to get uh, even more uh, harder and harder. Something super simple up front and then uh, having some more advanced stuff for several guys out there. I know there's different levels and tiers. Um, and take advantage of it because six weeks of lessons is like... For me, if you took it for me, six weeks of lessons would be like $150, be like $25 a lesson. So uh, take advantage of this free uh, guitar lessons. And I hope you enjoy this series I have of finger style and how to play, how to enjoy it, how to love it. Uh, fall in love with the guitar. It's great. Um, I, I, the Lord has, has truly blessed me, and I love playing the guitar. I love teaching the guitar, and uh, I love just giving my gift back to Him and any way I can give it back and help others and some other people learn is just a, a great thing that uh, I love and enjoy uh, to do absolutely it's fun it's fun fall in love with the guitar make it your make it your own and uh, honor the Lord with it uh, music is music's a music's a lifestyle um, you got junk coming in you're gonna have junk coming out so praise Jesus with it man do something good and meaningful with your life. Uh, my favorite verse is Psalms 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in Him, and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song, I praise Him. And uh, that's an absolute, uh, just uh, my favorite verse. Okay. JP, you want to come on and say something here? We got JP on the side. Look at that. We have a special appearance by John Paul Allen. Check that out. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? How are y'all doing? Hope y'all have enjoyed uh, what he's doing. Hey, go check out his academy. Go check out his book. You will enjoy it. But he wanted me to come on and just say a little something. So about a year ago, my uh, first EP came out, Life Isn't Fair. So it just passed the one year, released like around 11 o'clock on July 3rd of last year. And so... Thank y'all so much for those of you who have gone out and supported it. If you haven't, please go do it. Uh, I don't have like super amount of, of streams on this stuff, but one of the cool things is it did go 36 on the iTunes Christian uh, charts, the individual chart there. Went 36 on the albums. Uh, not for long, not not for very long at all, but it did. Hey, it, it made it. That's it, that. How many people can say they've made it? Like, that that's the big thing, you know? <laughs> it went, it's gone to about 22, 23 different countries around the world, which is really, really cool. And so I would just appreciate if you guys haven't gone out and listened to it, go out and listen to it. I hope it blesses you. Uh, the main song on there is really Life Isn't Fair. It's really the, the one that was entitled around. And uh, the scripture verse that I used for it is out of 2 Corinthians, or it was uh, or chapter, or chapter 10. I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with God to take it away, but he responded, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. And so, life isn't fair simply because we receive the grace of God. Life isn't fair not because of the bad things that happen to us, but because of the good things that happen to us. So, I hope you guys 
enjoy it. Be blessed. Check out his stuff. Go for it, man. Thanks, JP. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, that's what's that's what's awesome about this. You know, you get uh, you want to learn to play some cool songs. You want to learn. You want to hear some good songs. Then uh, my academy. Some of the stuff we do is great, and we do it all for the Lord, and so to give Him glory and uh, praise uh, Christian music. So if you want to like play a good song and listen to a good song, you get to do both because you get to do all of that kind of stuff. So go check out Life Isn't Fair and hear why JP said life isn't fair because it's absolutely true. Um, we deserve every time some, if you get somewhere and you go, man, life just isn't fair and just stop and go, praise God it's not because hell would be our home if it wasn't. So I hope you guys are encouraged and uh, challenged and go out and download that free book copy. Go out and listen to Life Isn't Fair by John Paul Allen and uh, give that a listen. And uh, we'll see you next time. Leave comments below and I'll answer any questions you guys have. And uh, if you comment, uh, hey, I might even actually do something that you're wanting to specifically learn in the comments below. If I get enough of something, I'll uh, do it on here. So you guys stay in touch and uh, take advantage of these lessons and God bless and we will see y'all later.